people. Thanks for joining me for another edition of This Old Gibson. We'll be doing a little finish repairs down here and uh, looking at some other, some other things, looking inside and uh, working on a couple frets. But most, most of all, I just want to appreciate this nice old Kalamazoo. We've got an action of 7 64ths on the bass side and the treble side. And we've got a string gauge of 13 to 56, which makes it awfully hard to play. So I'll probably be putting some 10 through 47 on here and making it a lot easier to play, but uh, might be able to see if there's a shim down in the saddle slot that we can remove, make the action a little lower. This is tuned a whole step flat also, and it still plays horribly. The intonation is not horribly bad. Not too bad, I should say. This might be hard to see, but when I put a 12 inch straight edge here, and I check the neck relief over here, it's, it's pretty decent. It's like four to three maybe three thousandths of an inch, four thousandths. But once we get beyond the body joint, it, it appears that it just, you know, dives up. That's the ski jump thing. That really telling me that it does need a neck reset. So there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot I can do to lower the action on this. But I think putting the lighter gauge strings will help us to play it a little bit. And it won't, you know, it shouldn't make it sound any worse. These guitars aren't known for being the loudest anyhow. I'm not sure that we should lower this any further. Um, obviously this is a replacement bridge because in the 50s they just had a straight bridge, no reverse belly. This is something that was more of a 1960s design because I have a 66 and it has this style, exact style, replacement bridge. And you recall that the LG1s and LGOs had a, a plastic bridges. So this, I don't know. Let's look at this little area. So this area appears to have been crushed somehow. I'm going to brush in some lacquer retarder and then walk away. You know, this will kind of re rehydrate any crushed lacquer and kind of soften the area a little bit, but it took a hit at some point. I'll come back tomorrow and uh, probably brush in a little. You know what, I think I might just just fill in the entire area with some glue boost and glue dry and then maybe touch up the color just a little bit. So these first three frets are very pitted from the strings, indentations from the strings. Everything else looks good. I talked to them about replacing them and stuff, but I'm measuring the height of them and they still have like 42, 43 thousandths of an inch. They're about a hundred thousandths wide. So there's plenty of uh, metal on these frets. I can just uh, recrown these three real quick and polish them, and they'll look as good as new. I'll run a blue line across the tops of them so you can see my progress. Which I normally don't do, I can just see what's going on. Do this for both or the other two, maybe even do the fourth one slightly. And uh, this is a single cut bastard file, so it leaves a very smooth edge. Uh, 
there's not much to polish after using one of these. It's kind of like using one of those diamond crowning files. But we'll do these three. By the time I'm done polishing them with sandpaper, these little dents will disappear. And take some just uh, plain old regular clear shellac and brush it on, kind of wet. This is just some de-waxed shellac flakes. Just something to protect the wood, seal it back up. No big deal. Now I'll get polishing with sandpaper. I use 220 get grit through 2000 grit and all the grits in between. For the first couple of grits I use the stick it sandpaper and then I just grasp a little harder with this wet wet dry sandpaper all from Stumac. I use the stainless steel fret guard so I don't scratch up the rosewood. I do also a little uh, with the grain of the rosewood with the scotch Bright pad. And then, this is still soaking wet from the Dunlop lemon oil. I'll end up wiping that off a little bit. Now, I'm going to fill in all that missing lacquer with some glue boost fill and finish and glue dry accelerate all. Just kind of spread it around with the craft stick. And then I do a little sanding and then I do a little drop fill with the looper and some fill and finish ultra thin. Accelerate once, accelerate twice, three times a goo bloost. This is a black light look at the missing lacquer. It always appears as a very dark area. There's nothing we can do to get it back besides refinish the whole guitar. He also told me to take a look at these tuner bushings. He said when he was putting on these strings, he noticed some of them were swiveling and rotating and they were loose. And some wise guy ended up putting the string through the hole twice. You're asking for getting poked in the finger when you do that kind of stuff. I didn't realize it now, but here in a little bit you'll see this uh, truss rod acorn nut is thrashed. Yep, loose bushing number one. I think I ended up finding three or four loose bushings. Going to have to take the tuners off. And good thing I did too because I found some more nefarious deeds that happened. And I was able to clean things up here. Some double crosser went in there with some 3-in-1 oil and just douched the whole area. I got to warn you all about that. Keeping the wood all moist with oil is not a good idea. This wood needs to stay as dry as possible. Otherwise, it'll just completely rot. So the idea here to make the bushings fit is to decrease the circumference of each hole. I do that with some of this uh, super glue. Ultra Gel Control CA Glue. By placing a little bit on a toothpick and swirling it around on the inside of these holes, I, of each hole, making for the bushing to have a nicer, tighter fit. I'll use the Stumac brush on accelerator for this job since it's not in an area that anyone will ever see. It's okay if it blushes a little bit. Whenever I'm doing a finisher pair, though, I always use the glue boost 
glue dry aerosol accelerate tall because it is non-blushing I can fine-tune the, the diameter of each hole with this peg hole reamer add a little bit more as needed and it turns out that that worked out pretty good because it didn't take too long and it's just enough to hold them in place keep them from falling out put the reinstall the tuners oh yeah and I'll put a little bit of this brown lithium grease that I keep in a syringe clean off each shaft and uh, lube it a little bit to help it along but no please don't just go dumping three-in-one oil all around it's better to use something thick like grease or wax just trying to protect the old wood there that wood's over 60 years old now I like this gyroscopic DeWalt screwdriver. Put a little bit of a, a magnetic charge on the end of the screwdriver tip and it holds the screw. You can also jam some of the grease down into that little hole in the tuner and uh, get it down into the worm gear. Now I'll put on those 10 through 47 D'Addario strings I was talking about. I realized after a, a second here that I had the 8020s and uh, I had to swap those out for some phosphor bronze. But I ended up filming the part where I accidentally put on the 8020s, first two strings, anyways. We'll get those swapped out with the good phosphors before we do the demo. If you, if you do the strings, you know, if you leave enough slack there so you can go around the peg once or twice, you don't have to run the string through the hole twice. Just asking to get poked. You're also asking to uh, scratch up the peg head. Well, look at that thing. That was very hard to get out. The truss rod itself was angled downward, so I'll take this gouge tool and quickly remove some of the wood so that I can actually get the tool in there. I had to use needle nose pliers to back that old acorn nut out of there. I could not get the tool in there. The 15 six, or the 5 sixteenths hex wrench would not go. So I'll make this look nice by adding a little black shellac. This is just um, Zinzer spray shellac with a little bit of mix all black and that's a mix all pigment takes a few coats because that wood's a little thirsty right now luckily shellac dries within like 20 30 seconds and you can just hit it with a second coat right away that being said shellac is uh, still a very delicate finish so I'm going to go into that truss rod cavity and uh, put some glue boost over top of the black. It dries fast and it's forgiving, this shellac. So even if you slop a little bit on the old lacquer, you can, you can wipe it off if you get to it within 10 seconds. It's not the end of the world. We just want to make this look good from you know four or five feet out. If you get real close to this, you'll still see there was some damage done. This is the Glue Boost Ultra Thin on a Q-tip. Just going to put one little layer of clear finish on here. And an annoying little eyelash ended up down there. I'll shoot some accelerator, but see that little hair? Piece of fuzz? Get that off of there. 
And that dries almost immediately. Here's a brand new acorn nut. We'll lube it up with a little bit of that brown lithium grease. I saw Dave Collings doing this, using brown lithium grease, so I ran down to Harbor Freight and got me a tube. It'll be a lifetime supply for about $15. It's about a one pound tube. I just put a teeny bit in a syringe and use a little dab here and a little dab there. Now I'm able to use the actual tool. All right now, I sanded with up to 800 grit over top of that fill and finish. So I've got a pretty level surface here to work on. Not perfectly level, but remember he didn't want to spend more than a few hundred bucks on this. He just wanted to Get it where it looked good hanging on the wall. Maybe he'll hang on to it for a few years and pass it on. I use this real fine fingernail brush. The thing I noticed about the uh, guitar here, this sunburst, on the bass side and up around the uh, upper bout, they had a nice dark, almost tobacco brown color right along the binding. But over here on the, uh, on the treble side, lower bout, it was just kind of a red color. It's kind of weird. I don't know if you'll notice when I pan out, but smudging the the finished result is a little better when you just smudge it smudge it around with your fingertip. That way it doesn't look too as spotty. But after this dries for a little while, I'll start wiping on some clear wipe on poly. I used red mahogany mixed with some zinser spray shellac, some mix all red pigment, um, some golden brown, and I thinned it and cleaned up my brush with the denatured alcohol. And that seemed to be the right color mix for me. Because uh, from two or three feet out, you can't even tell. You have to get up right on top of it to see that there's even a a repair, a finish repair going on there. They scrub with naphtha to clean. I don't want to scrub off the color, so I'm only scrubbing a little outside that color area. Then I wipe with the cotton ball. And then, then I wipe. And uh, no, I'm not spraying because this isn't a four or five hundred dollar restoration. It's just a, you know, couple hundred dollars. Get it looking and playing good, and maybe uh, hold on to it for a few years, and then, you know, flip it and pass it on to the next guy. Um, someone wants to overspray some some lacquer over this you know I would recommend maybe airbrushing the color if you want to if someone wants to do a more elaborate high quality restoration you'd want to spray that red color over top of this in a burst and uh, it would turn out better too but for this one we'll just We'll just do a wipe on a few coats of this clear and send it on back. It's a day later and it's time to treat the uh, finish, polish, and we got the Trizac 3000 with some simple green as a lubricant. Just gonna take off any little rough edges, scuff it up a little bit, and then we'll get the uh, Meguiar's Auto Polish. We'll wipe that off with a cheap paper towel. And then I'll get out the Viva paper towel. 
rip off a small portion, get a little bit of the Meguiar's Mirror Glaze 105, and we'll give it a buff. Usually on one of these old guitars, it means we're going to have one clean spot on the whole entire guitar. Because look, there's dirt coming off on there. Yep, one clean spot. What do you know? I definitely see a line right here. So I'm going to rip off another fresh piece. I'm going to go to the ultimate compound and just get a little bit. This is the cinnamon flavored stuff. I mean, scented stuff. Let's just see if we can buff out that line. Maybe if I run it right here only, I'll get a little. Try this. Thanks for tuning in today and hanging out with me. These guitars aren't known to be the loudest. Um, another thing about this guitar is that it has uh, like a mahogany bridge plate overlay on the inside that uh, doesn't help that much. I mean, if that were maple, it would sound brighter. But we made a big improvement with the truss rod acorn nut, replacing that sucker. It looks good. Thanks again for subscribing and tuning in. We'll catch you later.